Time for Task and Twos. Hey, Ty Cat fans, welcome to the Task and Twos show. I'm Luke Tasker, joined weekly by Andy Fan Twos, my former teammate. Andy, good morning, man. How are you? Morning, Lucas. I'm doing excellent. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Oh, dude, I'm doing good, man. We, uh, it's crazy. I feel like I've been coming up, you know, just constantly. We have all these games are such a we're in such a tight schedule right now. Um, but I'm looking forward to Friday coming back up to uh, Tim Hortons Field to get the fans back in there again. It's gonna be exciting. Me as well. A night game under the lights. Uh, so first one of the year for the home for the home side and. I always love playing on the lights. Yeah, man. There's something, there's something different about it. And um, seven o'clock should be right around sunset, I think. And it'll be, it'll be pretty electric having everyone rolling in and and the lights on. And hopefully, it's a another beautiful night. It looks like it's going to be. Yeah, I love that. I love that time too. You always, uh, I remember warming up for the game, and you're dealing with the, uh, you know, the sunshine still over top of the stadium. You get it in your eyes, but you know, but you, you know, you know, you come, you come out for the coin toss, and everything's everything's behind the stadium now. The sky's beautiful. It's ready, ready to go. No interruptions left. It's uh, it's a, it's a great, uh, great time for a game and a great field at uh, Tim Hortons Field. So, it'll be good. Yeah, well said. It's uh, <laughs> it's like it's going to be really muggy. I, I, I hear it's supposed to be really humid and like twenty seven or something. So you're going to be out there in warm ups, just like sweating like crazy. And then go back in for that 15, 20 minutes, come back out and you'll feel the breeze and, and the cool air. And it's just going to be, it's going to be chilling. Yeah, it's great. I think the, uh, the hottest game I probably have, we probably ever played at Tim Hortons Field was the first game ever, the Labor Day Classic in the, uh, in the gray uniforms uh, where Bakari scored the touchdown. You remember that? It was like, it was like 30 something (laughs) degrees and like, and just as humid as could be. And of course, that wasn't a night game, so it, was, it stayed that way the whole day. Hopefully, not. Hopefully, we won't have it quite like that. But yeah, it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be pretty humid there on Friday night. Calgary Stampeders are coming in. It's crazy, man. Uh, Fourteen games this year. It still feels like the Tie Cats are just sort of, you know, we're just they're just finding their way through the season, and and a lot of things still to shake down. But after on after Friday, there is one game left in the first half of the season. I mean, it's mind blowing. <laughs> I guess for Calgary, or Calgary hasn't had a bye week yet. They're two and four. This is the midpoint of the season for them. Like it's it's going so much faster than than your regular season. It's really different, you know. Yeah, no doubt. But at the same time, you know, the the weather is going to start changing in a couple of weeks. So it's uh, it's time to really start putting the pressure on and stringing some wins together. It was kind of nice to see. Not nice. That's the wrong word to use it, but not necessarily a bad thing to see them sort of get knocked down to size after after two convincing wins and full team efforts. You could see they, you know, maybe they were a little cocky, or maybe they, um, maybe they just came out a little flat. But uh, obviously, a good learning lesson there to to um, you know put step back on the gas yeah. going into the sec going into going into tomorrow night's game. Every uh, I think it's been the story of two teams for me, and it's different because like for the first time ever, I'm watching a, I'm watching very very intently each game, right? Like you're, it's just so different from a casual uh, when you're in the booth than watching a casual football game. But the games, the Montre- the game in Montreal, and the Labor Day Classic against Toronto, it was it was a very very cohesive, you know, uh, three. You know, all, all three, all three phases of the ball were involved in those victories, and in the losses, it's not like the Ticats have really had these like, you know, shootout. It's not like we've we haven't seen like a shootout and then a loss at the last drive. We haven't seen like a like a battle back and forth, back and forth. It's really just been like sloppy football or or cohesive, you know, a good looking team win. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see, we'll see how they see see which of those two can uh, can come out on Friday and can carry the day. Uh, through the rest of the season, but a couple things obviously changing for this week. Um, David Watford, it looks like he's going to be starting a quarterback. Um, you know, I had one year of experience with him in 2019. Uh, certainly uh, he fit the role as, as just a, a backup quarterback to Dane uh, throughout the le- second half of that season last year. Very well. I mean, really good mental approach to the game, really good demeanor in the locker room. Um, but now it's on him. What's your experience with a young quarterback coming in at a time like this in the season? 
Oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know David Watford at all. I've seen him, obviously seen him play a little bit, uh, 2019 and, and then last game. So I think it's good. He got a little bit of, little bit of experience in there. Um, but you know, he's going to be ready to play, you know, yeah. you know, the coaches are going to put him in a position that may include, um, may include shortening the playbook or fitting it out a little bit, but they're going to try to, you know, uh, use his strengths to their best advantage. But in my experience, uh, you know, I've had a lot of quarterbacks get injured over the years and, um, you know, it brings a different dynamic and it's a little exciting. It's, it's hard. It's hard to game plan against as the opposition, as the defense. So yeah, true. I think uh, I think that you can have some some wrinkles in there that could be successful, especially in, in game one, in game one of of the game plan, and might not necessarily uh, continue through the season. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the guys who started the season off on the sixth game are going to be coming back after this game. So. That'll be another little milestone, um, you know, if they're healthy. So, yeah, Absolutely. I'm excited to see David play and looking forward to see, like, them build on, like, a guy like David Ungerer, who built on his his game last week. Uh, he, he had some monster plays. And, you know, there were some there were some bright spots in the game last week, but definitely got to put it together. Absolutely. That's a good point, too. I mean, hopefully we would see Chris Van Zyl and um... – you never know about Posey and Addison and hopefully their return as soon as well. But one of the things I would expect with David Watford with the young quarterback, I'm thinking you gotta have a you gotta have a, a group of plays on your call sheet for that week that, like you said, play right into a young quarterback's strength. So and, and, and also I also I think that a lot of plays that just eliminate decisions. So if if you have to if you're looking for rhythm, if you're looking for a time to settle the game down for a young quarterback. You know, you can call that play that's whatever. It's all hitches, and he just has to choose his matchup pre-snap. Or it's a uh, it's a called, you know, one receiver key uh, concept where really there's not really too much of a read on a play. Or you get some called quarterback runs, something in there to uh, mentally where that quarterback sees that play get called on his wristband, and he says, "Okay, like I don't I, I don't have to I don't have too many decisions to make here because." That's all, the football game is just a thousand decisions in a row. You know, everybody just through constantly, even within every play, there's multiple decisions that you're making and how you line up and how you, uh, you know, approach a guy you're even blocking. But for a quarterback, and it, it's 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 tenfold, right? And so if you can work some plays in there that make a young quarterback settle down, that say, okay, this play, I I can I know I'm just catching this ball, I'm taking a quarterback draw up the middle, something like that to, uh, you know, just to help that help that young player relax, but excited to see what Tommy and Watford can kind of put together in an offensive scheme that's probably going to look you know it might look a little different from from when Dane was uh, has been playing the last couple of weeks we'll see um yeah I'd like I'd like to see I think you made a good point there I'd like to see them sort of maybe use some pre-snap motion to give some uh or or even doing the the, the freeze counts where they the receivers run up and, and stop at the line to sort of try to give some tells whether it's man or zone on defense and then have, like you said, a simple, if it's man, I'm going to the short side and I have, you know, a, a go and a 10 yard out. And if I like the out, take it. If I don't just give the receiver a chance on the go and, and that's it. And if it's zone, you're going to the field and you're just high, low in one player. And mm -hmm. so it's an easy, it's an easy read and you just throw off one defender instead of, you know, trying to read three levels uh, in a time when the pressure's on or if, uh, not getting a lot of time in the pocket or something like that. So yeah, I think that's a great call, and and you know the tie cats do use a lot of pre snap motion and a lot of misdirection. So looking forward to see, looking to see more of that tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's Calgary coming into the to Tim Hortons Field. I, I, I know you had some success against Calgary as a rough rider, but uh, Calgary was a tough opponent every year for us. I uh, we we. Uh, Never were able to get it done uh, against Calgary uh, from Hamilton this year. They're they're two and four. It's not exactly the regular uh, the Calgary Stampeders that we've seen for the last whatever eight eight or so years. Um, they uh, they're at a point in their season where they're trying to figure things out as well. So 
uh, would be a very, very valuable uh, win to get a, against a Western team. And I think because of what the record has been with uh, Calgary over the last, you know, nearly 10 years, I think, uh, I think this would be a really valuable morale boost for the Ticats as well as they are turning into the closing in on the end of the first half of the season here to uh, get back to that 500 mark. I think it would be valuable. So we'll see, man. It's exciting. Looking forward to it. Uh, Ticat fans, join us an hour before kickoff. Andy Fantuz and Louis B will have your pregame. RJ Broadhead and myself will have the call starting at, uh, I believe it's a 7, 7 p.m. kickoff this Friday. Looking forward to it, and we'll see you there. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Task. See you tomorrow.